join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. The verdict in a 1.9 billion US dollar Korean crypto fraud case is out. Welcome to The Daily Forecast, February 11th, 2022. I'm Megha Chada of Forecast, covering all things blockchain. Now, seven former executives of defunct Korean crypto exchange We Global, charged with defrauding over 50,000 investors, now know their fate. We'll take a look at the judge's decision and a whole lot more coming right up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. Let's kick off with some of the biggest stories from around Asia today. First up, India's central bank chief has issued a stark warning over crypto. Reserve Bank of India's Shakti Kanta Das said cryptocurrencies have no underlying value and that it is, quote, not even a tulip. The governor was referring to the Dutch tulip mania in the 17th century, where a speculative bubble surrounded the highly sought-after plant. Das's comments come just over a week after the Indian government imposed a 30% tax on income from crypto assets. The RBI has consistently opposed crypto trading in the country, even issuing a circular back in 2018 trying to stop banks from facilitating transactions. However, the Supreme Court struck that down. And sign-ups to crypto exchanges like CoinDCX continue at a quick pace. Over in South Korea, gaming giant Netmobile has partnered with Binance on GameFi. The two are planning to establish a global blockchain gaming ecosystem. The world's largest crypto exchange by trading volumes is to provide its blockchain platform and tech infrastructure. While the developer of Everybody's Marble and Seven Nights will work on GameFi projects and NFT offerings. Netmarble has joined a growing list of South Korean game developers, including Kakao Games, Come To Us, and WeMade, who are diving deeper into blockchain gaming and the metaverse. You can find those stories and a whole lot more at Focus.News. Staying in South Korea, judgment has been made in a 1.9 billion US dollar crypto fraud case. When the seven former executives of now defunct V Global Crypto Exchange faced court back in January, prosecutors demanded life sentences. Forecast Danny Park has the verdict. All seven were found guilty with sentences ranging in length from 4 to 14 years for six of the executives and 22 years in the case of the exchange's CEO. Prosecutors had urged the maximum punishment of life in prison due to the severity of the case, which they said destroyed the victims' families. Investors had been promised a 300% return on their virtual asset investments, as well as 1,000 US dollars in commission if they referred new customers to the exchange. But while some did receive a portion of the promised return, prosecutors said those funds had simply been taken from newer customers' deposits. Han Sang-jun of law firm Taegon, representing V Global's victims, told Forecast he expects all seven to appeal. However, with most of the damages not recovered, he doesn't expect much change. During the trial, the exchange's former CEO Lee byung apologized to the victims and said there had been no intention to defraud. One expert told Forecast the verdict won't necessarily help the victims. <laughs> 그리고 자기 형을 살고 나오면 형사적인 책임을 물었기 때문에 형사적인 부분에 대해서는 거의 그냥 피부에 와닿지가 않는 거예요. 흘람하고 말람 말고 이런 식으로 계속 알고 있기 때문에 그 투자자들만 뭐그 손해 피해를 당한다고 힘내죠. Professor Huang says despite the heavy jail time, Korean law may not be strong enough as he would have expected sentences of 80 to 100 years for a similar case in the U.S. He adds that the law should be able to punish more severely depending on the amount of damages faced by investors. For Forecast, I'm Danny Park. Hackers made off with over $320 million last week in one of the biggest heists in crypto history. Wormhole, a cryptocurrency platform that allows transactions across various blockchains, lost millions in wrapped ETH in the exploit. 
while DeFi has been hailed for democratizing finance and allowing transactions at the speed of light, the wormhole exploit reiterates the need to balance speed with security as we move towards disintermediation. And Adrian Brink of Anoma, a protocol that enables trading of any kind of digital assets among any number of parties with full zero-knowledge privacy, joins me now to talk more about this. So great to have you with us, Adrian. Good to be back. Adrian, hackers exploited a bridge between Solana and ETH blockchains to steal millions. Some are laying the blame on Solana's speed and proof-of-history protocol. Your thoughts? Well... I think to begin with, you can debate whether these were hackers or this was simply the way the system was intended to work, right? This is always the question. The implementation was live for everyone to see. Is this really hacking or is this just using functionality that is unexpected, um, but it is there and everyone was happy with it when they started using it. Um, I think though, sort of irrespective of that discussion, uh, the speed actually has nothing to do with it. Uh, Solana's proof of history makes it hard to build, um, or it makes it impossible to build efficient light kinds for Solana, which result, which means that you need to be using semi-centralized bridges, which Wormhole is. Wormhole, it's not a decentralized bridge. It's a bridge that has 15 out of 20 signatories, I think. But these 15 signatories are just centralized entities. Um, so I think it's nothing specifically to the speed of Solana, but the bridge design that is sort of based on the fact that Solana doesn't have an efficient light client. Wormhole is an interoperability platform, an area that you're very familiar with. What do you think was missed by the platform? What could they have done differently? I, I don't think this was the intention of the original developers that someone could, because effectively what was missing was a signature verification. Um, as in the, per the exploit or uh, the attack really just replayed a transaction at which point on the Solana chain, the smart contract didn't verify that the signature was correct. Um, the main thing that people really have to realize is that what you uh, see is what you get. As in, if you haven't looked at the underlying implementations yourself or someone that you fundamentally trust has looked at them, uh, you're always at risk. And I mean, clearly in this case, what was missing was uh, security audits that could have caught this bug. But we also have to be realistic that in any large scale system, there will always be vulnerabilities, unexpected behavior, and that is very, very hard to get around this problem. Adrian, reports suggest that Wormhole offered the hackers $10 million to recover the money, but they were not likely successful as we later heard that a venture cap fund backing the platform made good those losses. So this again brings to the fore perils of the lack of regulation in the decentralized world, doesn't it? I don't actually think so. I, I think these kinds of problems also exist in the existing financial system. There are lots of exploits happening all the time. I think the bigger problem here potentially with Wormhole is that instead of having a truly decentralized bridge with a well understood and publicly specified protocol like IBC, Wormhole it's effectively a multi-sig, right? Um, and so there are perils in using completely new and untested protocols um, that are not well specified in the public eye and hence may have vulnerabilities that are unexpected. Uh, I think this will go way over time though as we put more and more trust into these systems and start using them more and more. Well, that is the key, isn't it? More testing and audits needed to improve the systems. Thanks as always for joining in, Adrian. And that's the daily forecast from our team right here in Asia. For more, visit forecast.news. I'm Igha Chada. Until next time.